Here is the best exercise for strengthening the feet against overpronation. Moving on to step three. These four characteristics work together to combat overpronation. Your overpronation may not be caused by your feet or wearing the wrong shoes, but could be a result of weak glutes. Try this. Pronation is a natural foot motion that helps absorb harsh impact forces that would otherwise travel up to the knees, hips, lower back, and beyond. But when the foot loses control over this motion, it enters an extreme position we call overpronation. So instead of protecting the body from impact stress, overpronation actually adds stress to all the tissues in the feet and ankles and even affects the position of the knees. So let's go through the five steps to get you to pronate, but not to overpronate. What causes more pronation, 60 minutes of walking or 60 minutes of running? The answer is 60 minutes of running, and the reason is due to the additional foot muscle fatigue caused while running, according to a study which measured this in 36 people. So if you wanna pronate less, you have to strengthen your feet to be more resistant to fatigue. Just nine weeks of foot strengthening exercises has been found to significantly improve foot posture in people with pronated feet. Here is the best exercise for strengthening the feet against overpronation. There are three levels. Level one involves standing on one leg on a surface with a slope that runs away from the body. The slope orientation promotes supination, which is the shape an overpronated foot struggles to achieve. The goal is to reinforce the sensation and build the motor pattern. In level two, you've got to balance on a flat surface while maintaining the same sensation felt in the supinated pose, but without the assistance of a slope. In the third and final level, you rotate the slope to run towards the body, which will promote pronation. The objective is to then fight against the forces by pulling the foot inwards by using the previously trained supinated foot pattern. By exercising the foot to resist overpronation, you can improve your foot stability and reduce the risk of overpronating. For the full A to Z on foot strengthening, join the Barefoot Strength course. We have an entire section dedicated to strengthening the feet against overpronation. Find it at bfs.fit. Now you may ask, what's better for overpronation? Wearing arch supporting orthotics or strengthening my feet muscles to support the arch naturally? Well, arch supporting orthotics have been found to reduce maximum heel eversion, a key metric of pronation by more than 20% in some runners. So arch supporting insoles can be helpful as an assistive tool, but the end goal should always be to develop strong enough foot muscles to no longer need artificial support. Personally, I use arch supporting insoles strictly for longer runs and as a recovery tool after intense barefoot training. My favorite ones are these from Amazon because they have a pretty flat heel bed that doesn't impact my posture and they only reach the midfoot, allowing my forefoot and toes to remain flexible. I'll drop links to them below. The next step to fixing overpronation involves toe alignment. Bad toe alignment like bunions makes your feet weaker and more likely to overpronate. Here's why. All the intrinsic foot muscles that help support the foot arch and stabilize the ankles are tethered to the toes, the greatest of which is the abductor hallucis muscle which attaches to the big toe. So when the big toe is out of position, such as in the case of bunions, the connected abductor hallucis is twisted and pulled out of position. The result is a less effective muscle that weakens over time. And without strong foot muscles, the arch is likely to collapse into overpronation on each step. This was observed in a study on the walking patterns of 25 young women with bunions. So what's the fix? Well, if you have a big toe that is misaligned, here is a proven scientific method to fix it in just 12 months without surgery. You'll need a pair of silicone toe spacers which gently separate the toes apart. For effective results, wear them for a minimum of six hours at night. If that's too challenging, then gradually increase usage until the required duration is achieved. Do this consistently every day for at least 12 months. Finally, you'll need to find shoes which are wide and foot-shaped in the front so that your toes aren't being squeezed together when you're not wearing spaces. Oh, and don't forget to take before and after pictures and send them to us to post in a future video. Links to the silicone spaces we've tried and tested are also below. Moving on to step three, find shoes for overpronation. We went deep into this topic in our previous video, but for the sake of this video, here's a quick summary. These four shoe features combat overpronation. A wide toe box allows the toes to spread and splay naturally, which helps improve the base of support and stability. 
flexible barefoot soles encourage movement and strengthen the foot muscles. Stronger feet can better support the arch. Zero drop and thin soles improves one's sense of ground feel which helps speed up the time it takes to stabilize the foot during movement. A slim heel design reduces the moment arm between the heel and the edge of the shoe. The lower leverage helps decrease the amount of rotational force the shoe can impart on the foot after impact. These four characteristics work together to combat overpronation. Now that you have the right shoes, we can move to step four, which involves working on your running style. Is heel or forefoot striking better for overpronation? Well, a 2004 study found that forefoot strikers pronate more because the foot tends to hit the ground in a more inverted position and then has to move through a wide range of pronation to get back to neutral. Heel strikers land with less inversion and go through less total pronation range, but then end up with a higher maximum pronation angle at the end of each step. So what's better? Well, more pronation range in the forefoot strikers can actually help absorb impact forces. And since the foot position is close to neutral at the end of the stance, the foot and ankle joints aren't stressed by any extreme positions. The heel strike, on the other hand, gets less shock absorbing benefits from less pronation range of motion and has to deal with a more extreme overpronated foot angle at the end of each step. So while forefoot strikers pronate more, Heel strikers tend to overpronate. The bottom line, if you want to stop overpronating, learn to forefoot strike. Here's the easiest way to go from an overstriding heel striker to an efficient forefoot striker. Download any metronome app on your phone and set the beats per minute between 160 and 180. Then run to the beat so your cadence or steps per minute matches the metronome. This higher than average cadence will help shorten your stride, preventing a heel first overstriding running pattern. All right, so we've covered the importance of strong feet, toe alignment, the right shoes, and the ideal running style to combat overpronation. Now for the final step, I'll throw a spanner in the works. Your overpronation may not be caused by your feet or wearing the wrong shoes, but could be a result of weak glutes. Try this, stand with your feet pointed straight and hip width apart. Then bring your knees together until they touch. The adduction and internal rotation of the knees will deactivate your glutes, which you can confirm by poking at your rump. All this will have a downstream effect at your feet, which should now be overpronated. Try to then contract your glutes until they become hard. The glute activation should pull the knees apart through abduction and external rotation. Once again, you'll see the downstream effect on the feet, which should now be in a much stronger supinated shape. This is why having strong active glutes is key to unlocking strong feet. And the cool thing is science backs this up. This study discovered the best way to fix flat overpronated feet. They first used the tried and tested method of foot strengthening, which produced good improvements over a four week period. They then added glute exercises to the method. This one change produced a 68% higher improvement over the foot only method, proving how the feet and glutes work as a team to keep the body aligned and moving well. To build super strong feet and glutes, visit our academy here. And to take a deep dive into the best shoes for overpronation, click here. See you there.